Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Um, today I'm going to be talking about some novelizations of movies, specifically looking at the two, the first two Indiana Jones movies, Raiders of the Lost Ark and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I guess we're kind of having a nostalgia moment with Indiana Jones with the new movie coming out shortly next month. And But there's also been a renewed interest in novelizations now and basically a novelization was new movies when they were were released a a companion novel to the movie would would also be um released as well and and they never went away there's still novelizations being written of um say your your big more big budget blockbuster movies do get novelizations but but not as many as there used to be. Um, I think it, it just seems like we don't, they used to be like 30, 40 years ago. I remember as a kid going into stores, you know, department stores, drug stores, whatever, you know, they'd have a little book aisle and there'd always be movie novelizations in, in, in the um, ready to be sold. And clearly they were, they were big sellers. But lately, there's been uh, more nostalgia for those. I don't know why exactly. Maybe it's just a generation trying to reconnect with their childhood a little bit, or it's um, a longing for this pastime. So, so a little bit of nostalgia involved. So, and also, you know, and they were also marketing tools, and like like Star Wars is famous. Um, the, the Star Wars novelization actually came out months. I think it was maybe four or five months before the movie came out. So you had um, so novelizations were also a way to generate buzz for for a movie. And another point of interest with them was that you would get a somewhat different um, story in the novels who would often have extra scenes that weren't in the movie or you learn more about the characters and their background. So that was another big plus for getting novelizations. I know in movies like w would air on TV, like network TV, often like this is like in the 70s and 80s, often there would be extra scenes or be television cuts or different than the that theatrical cuts. But I guess once DVDs came along, it, it just became common for extra scene features and you know getting used to, getting used to those. So it, it's interesting how that media has changed through the years. But but anyway, I never read any of these. Um, so Raiders Lost Dark by um, Campbell Black. Um, I read this novelization, and Campbell Black was a, I believe a, a Scottish writer, and. He had been writing since the 60s. So, and by reading this one, you get a sense where the writer was well experienced, had a great facility of language. It's it's written in a very pulpy style. And it's interesting to think of the movie. I don't know if we think of Raiders of Lost Ark as, as a pulpy movie. It, it has those qualities. It's also often compared to like the old serials, which was inspired it from like the, the thirties and, and the forties and, 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 and that type of thing. But, but here in the novel, I mean, the Indiana Jones character is kind of a myst more mysterious character. And I think in the movie, we get that too, where in Harrison Ford's performance, where he's, he's kind of a colder character in this movie. And he's, um, Maybe not the most um, ethical character either. I mean, that comes out in that famous opening sequence where you know he's um, he's not afraid to kill. You know, he's he, you know he's kind of in this world where you can't trust anybody, and and he seems to be very much that. So, so Campbell Black kind of wrote him almost like a like a hard boiled detective at times, almost and someone who who has a goal of what they want to do and is determined to do anything to to get a hold of it so so we get a slightly different um variation on the character and i think with the following sequels that were made i think they they toned down the character a little bit and 
And it's often pointed out that the next one I'll talk about more, Temple of Doom is considered, you know, the, the dark entry in the series. And, and to some extent that to some extent that's true. I mean, there's, there's human sacrifice and there's child slavery and there's a lot of, um, mystical, dark, mystical things happening in Temple of Doom. But at the same time, that movie is, it's very cartoonish and it's, and, um, it's almost like Looney Tunes at times, you know, when, when they jump out of the plane and on the raft. And so there is that Looney Tunes quality that kind of dilutes the, the, um, the more frightening elements of the story. But, but anyway, I mean, Raiders is in some ways in tone, it's a much starker story that we have. And, and there are some extra scenes in this novel that are not in the movie. And um, we get a little bit more of Belloc, who's the antagonist in, in the story. And we learn a little bit about Belloc's background. And apparently he and Indiana Jones had known each other in college. And, and Belloc even um, stole Indiana Jones's thesis or something like that. So, so there's this history of Belloc always sort of... Um, um, getting the upper hand on Indiana Jones. And we get scenes of Belloc kind of interacting with um, the Nazis who he's collaborating with. And so, I mean, those scenes don't really change the story a whole lot, but it kind of adds a little bit more to it. And and one of the big controversies for Raiders, Raiders of the Lost Ark is the race relationship between Indy and Marion. And I don't want to, you know, that gets a little... <laughs> Um, uncomfortable. We, we think about the age difference between the two and when did their relationship actually begin and was it appropriate? Well, clearly it was not a very appropriate relationship. And the book does get into that a little bit more than the movie does. Uh, so, but that's been something that's been, <laughs> been talked about um, more with um, Indiana Jones and Marion, who's a love interest in, in, in this in this one so and there's some extra you know there's some extra scenes kind of throughout it that doesn't really change the movie a whole lot but but overall it, it's um it's a good read uh you know it does actually add to the film you know it's not and and some sometimes the criticism of novelizations is that they they're basically just the movie put into prose just like a carbon copy of the movie and you know, you don't get that here. You know, you get a lot more detail and you kind of almost the next time you watch the movie, it might even kind of, um, kind of, um, change the way you look at the movie. So, so yeah. And then also the novelization for Temple of Doom. This is written by James Kahn, who I remember he wrote many novelizations. He wrote, um, Return of the Jedi. I remember reading that one a long, long, long time ago. And um, Polar Guys, which I never read, and The Goonies, I believe I read that he did. So he did a lot of the Spielberg, Lucas. He was sort of definitely in that orbit in the early, mid-1980s. Um, the tone of this one is different. You know, it's almost written more today. Like It's almost like more like a wild, young adult novel. It's kind of written in that tone. And the big reason for that, I think, is a lot of the book is written from Short Round's perspective. And that's one thing I like that Khan did where he does that, where he shifts perspective a lot between the three, between Indiana Jones and Willie Scott. And, but it seems like it's mostly short round is who the novel is mostly written from, which kind of gives it this, this, it's very um, charming, like an old adventure. Like there's a lot about short round that we learn. Like there's a whole sequence of short round that I don't know if it was filmed where we learn about him, um, that opening sequence at, at the club Obi-Wan and how short round just sort of shows up at the right time to, to, um, get Indy and Willie out of that situation, out of that, yeah, out of that, to help them escape. And, and the book gets into like short rounds day, like what led up to that and what he was doing and how he actually got the plane tickets and, and, um, he was, and, and we, it is mentioned in the movie that, you know, that Short Round's family was um, killed in, in the war um, when the um, Japanese attacked China. And there's 
So we get a lot more with, with short rounds and we, and I, one thing I really like what the book does with this character that he's kind of this, um, he's a baseball fanatic and he's a movie fanatic. So he's comparing a lot of the events that happen in the story to making baseball analogies or comparing them to, to, to movies is kind of his frame of reference with a lot of those things. So it's, um, so that was one thing I, I really liked what, what this novelization did. And um, like I said, it's, as far as the writing goes, it's not quite, it's just a whole different tone and a different style than, than Raiders than, than that novelization. This one is much more, it's a little bit faster paced and, it's a little bit more dialogue driven, but there's a lot of great details in there as well. We learn more about Willie Scott, played by Kate Capshaw, and we get a little bit more about her background and how she ended up in in Shanghai, and and you know she wanted to get into the movies, and through a course of events, she ended up as a nightclub singer in in, in Shanghai at the time, and um, yeah, yeah. So it's um. There's a few more sequences in here as well that were not in the movie, which I won't go into too much detail about, but, but we do get a little bit more story that's not in the movie. And it made me think a short round. I Someone tweeted the other day how, you know, Temple of Doom is a prequel to Raiders. It's set a year before the events of Raiders. And I'm still not sure why, why um, that decision was made, whether this was – a George Lucas thing where he likes to play with um, time timelines, like the, play with timelines like he did with Star Wars, you know, oh, episode four, it's an old story, and then we get the prequels and, and all that. So, so, but I don't know why specifically why it was done for, for Temple of Doom, but someone pointed out on Twitter that, you know, like, well, we're short round in Raiders of Lost Ark and, and, Last Crusade, short round is never mentioned either. And then in, in Crystal Skull, you know, we, <laughs> short round is never mentioned. It, it's kind of sad in the novel because um, short round, you know, Indy has promised to bring him back to America. And it doesn't say that Indy is going to like adopt short round, but, but basically he's going to get him to America and maybe get him in help him find a family or, or or something like that. So so it's an interesting part of the the um, Indiana Jones universe that's we don't know much about unless it's in some of the graphic novels or some of the other um, media that's been been done about the Indiana Jones stories. But but yeah, you think that like I wish in the movies in particular Last Crusade or Crystal Skull at least mention short round, you know, it would just it wouldn't take much or even a brief cameo appearance would have been, would have been um, really cool to like learn to like how that relationship was, how it evolved over time. But the novel does a great job of, of kind of setting up their, their relationship. And, and um, yeah, you do wonder what exactly happened. So, so anyway, yeah, um, I might come back and do Last Crusade and um, Crystal Skull, get a hold of those books and, and talk about those. But um, other than that, um, have a good day and I will talk to you later.